Hey there, everybody. Welcome to the Questions Podcast here in the Bible Bistro. And today we're going to talk about questions about freedom of speech. I know that's really kind of on everybody's mind, but it really popped up into my universe with this whole Joe Rogan thing over the last week and a half. And this it's been something I think is concerning. And I've spoken to the church about this several times, and I thought, well, maybe today in the Questions Podcast would be good to talk about Questions about freedom of speech. So Joe Rogan, he got in trouble because he said something that other people didn't like. And so now they're trying to take him down. It's interesting, too. Uh, he has, now I don't know him, I don't listen to his podcast, but what I understand, he has more listeners and viewers than all of the three major networks combined. All of them. Maybe all four networks combined. That's a lot of people. And... So he has a big platform, and if he takes a step out of line, then, of course, they're going to try to deplatform him, and that's what's going on right now because of what he said. It's really in the news. It's in the headlines. Uh, we also see it happening in Canada with the church in Canada. They're not allowed to say certain things about homosexuality or transgenderism. So free speech really today is not free. It's certain speech that's free. But all speech is not free. So, first of all, let's just talk about what freedom of speech is. We all know this instinctively. Everyone is allowed to have their say. It doesn't matter what their say is. So, you can speak what you want to speak, and I can speak what I want to speak, and, and nobody says nay to either one of us, no matter, no matter what our positions are. This is seen most clearly... In the, in the example of, say, for example, a pornographer, a gross pornographer speaking, and in the same place at the same time, the holiest saint of God speaking. And they're, they're on opposite ends of the spectrum, and yet in the same place at the same time, they're allowed both to speak. And then everybody in between there is allowed to speak at the same place in the same time period they're allowed to say whatever their opinions are that they want to say. And that's free speech. That he can say his piece, I can say my piece, and everybody's okay with that because it's free. It's not certain. Certain speech is when it's restricted. Free speech is when everybody can just say what they want and what they believe. Now there are two things that, I don't know, I'm going to say restrict speech and make it certain speech. And that is tyranny and idolatry. These two things are the things that make speech certain speech, not free speech. For example, tyranny is seen most clearly in the Communist Party of China. The Chinese Communists, they, rest they restrict speech. As a matter of fact, at the time of this recording, the 2022 Winter Games are taking place in Beijing, and all of the athletes have been told not to say anything about or against the policies of the communist Chinese. So you can't, you can't have free speech in there, because speech in China is restricted, and so the Chinese don't understand the idea of having the ability to speak freely, because Chinese, the Chinese people are run by a tyranny. Now, tyrannies can be secular, they can be religious. In this, in this case, the communists claim to be secular, but I wonder. Another um, example of this kind of restriction is in the Arab nations. The Arab nations uh, restrict speech if it's Christian speech, and so the church has to be very careful about what they say. Not that they stop speaking or preaching the gospel, but they have to do it under cover so that uh, they're not completely destroyed because the Arab nations are uh, believe in idolatry, and so they will, they will destroy anything that is not approved, you know, according to their idols. North Korea is an example of these two things being sort of joined at the hip because you have the tyranny of the state and you have the state-sponsored religion, which is that the Kim family is deified, so you have tyranny and idolatry joined together, 
And in that case, it's even worse for the church because if you try to say anything, you can't say, whether you're Christian or not, you, you can't say anything against the Kim family because not only is it against the state, but it's against their religious view, their sponsored religious view. So how does all this affect the church? Well, I've already mentioned that in a couple of cases, such as in the Arab nations, uh, in Canada is another place, in Australia, uh, in Europe, the church is greatly restricted in what they say, and it's going to get even worse in all those places, and it's going to get worse all around the world. Uh, especially here in America, it's coming for the American church as well. I don't know that the American church uh, is ready for the storm that's about to break on it. And another reason why I wanted to make this podcast. So the church is not given the mandate of freedom of speech in the Word of God. And we always have to remember we go back here for our, you know, for our foundation, for our standing. It's all right here. We're not given the freedom or the right to speak. We're given a commission to speak. It's our duty, according to our Savior, to speak and to preach the gospel. The church is built on that duty first and foremost. Everything else that the church does is in response to the preaching of the message of the gospel of Christ. So we're told in Matthew's gospel, in in chapter 28, verses 18, 19, and 20, that we're to go into all the world, baptizing them and teaching them to observe all things that Jesus taught. So there's the, there's the mandate for the church to speak. In, in Mark's gospel, in chapter 16, I believe it's verse 15, he said to them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So we're to go everywhere and to preach to everything were to saturate the creation with the message of the gospel. This is a mandate is also found in Luke's gospel. The mandate is also found in John's gospel. The mandate is found in the Old Testament. The mandate is found in the New Testament. It's everywhere. We have been given a duty. It's not a right. It is a privilege, but it's not a right. It's a mandate. It's a command. It's an imperative to go and speak. So, the church has that imperative to go and speak the gospel, and we know what the gospel is. You know, Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 what the gospel is. The preaching of the gospel is the death, burial, resurrection, and ascension of Christ. And if we're to go to the world and preach that gospel, what happens when our mandate to preach and to teach comes in conflict with the tyranny and idolatry of the world? And of course, it has. It is, and it always will. That's going to happen. That conflict is going to take place between the mandate of the church and the tyranny and idolatry in the world. There's always that conflict. There's always that tension that's happening. So our mandate doesn't stop just because people decide that it's inconvenient to hear the gospel. Our mandate doesn't stop to teach the entire counsel of God's word whenever something like homosexuality and transgenderism becomes popular. You know, we don't stop preaching the counsel of God's word when those things are popular. We don't stop preaching the counsel of God's word about marriage being between a man and a woman. You know, for example, uh, you know, I just saw a report today about how, you know, these uh, pods of people that are calling themselves married are becoming popular. And that's just ridiculous. Uh, the church must continue to preach. We're not to invite that kind of thing into the church. We're to speak against it and stand against it in the world. So we're going to come in conflict with the popular opinions of the world. The church must stand. And Jesus told us, you know, to be salt and to be light in the world. And that's our commission. And I want to encourage you, church. The the world's getting dark, and it's going to get darker. And this is going to become more and more of a problem. Um, Tyranny and idolatry have long desired to squash the voice of the people of God. And they still do. There's always going to be a conflict between Elijah and the prophets of Baal. You remember that conflict that took place on Mount Carmel. 
And Elijah invited them all in. He said, whoever answers by fire, he's God, we'll worship him. So eventually, you know, <clears throat> there's going to come a time when the proof is going to have to be given. You can't continue to say, stop speaking because I said so. Eventually, you're going to have to show that why you're telling us to stop speaking is more important. And of course, it's not because the gospel is the most important thing. The message of God's love, mercy, and grace is the most important thing. And we have the mandate to do that. So the conflict is real. It's happening now. It's going to get worse. Stay firm. Let me just read you something from uh, John's Gospel. This is John chapter 16. And Jesus spoke these words to his disciples. These things have I spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Even when speech isn't free, Jesus has overcome the world. I hope you guys are blessed and health doing well. And thank you for watching here to, to the end of this little video. Pray for one another. Pray for the church. Continue to be strong and preach the gospel. Don't give up and don't give in. I'll talk to you soon.